this is an example of a definite integral. A definite integral means you are going to get a definite answer out an actual number of value. You can tell it's a definite integral because you're always going to have bounds on it. So numbers here. So we've got a lower bound of seven and a, or excuse me, a lower bound of three and an upper bound of seven. And then we're taking the antiderivative of this equation here, 5x squared minus 7x plus 3. And then they put this dx at the back end. So the dx and the integral symbol up in front are really just directions telling you what to do to this equation in the middle. Looking to take our antiderivative, we've got rules just like we had with derivatives. This is just a bunch of stuff being added and subtracted. And so we're going to apply our main rule, which is our power rule. The power rule for antiderivatives just says add 1 to the power. And then step 2 of that process is divide by the new power. So we go apply that here. Working our way through this one piece at a time. Remember, break it up into smaller bite-sized problems by the pluses and the minuses. So I'm going to add 1 to the power there. That's going to get me x to the fourth. And then I divide by that new power, so divide by 4. I get a plus, again, adding one to the power, that's going to get me 5x to the third, divide by that new power, so divide by 3. Minus, and then we've got an unwritten 1 on that x, so I'm going to add one to the power, that's going to get me 7x squared, and then again, divide by that new power. At the end here, we have a, a constant, a number by itself. When we were taking derivatives, constants went away. Since we're undoing derivatives, we're going back the other direction, so constants gain a letter back. So we're going to put a 3x there. Because we're dealing with a definite integral now, at the end of this, what you're going to put is you're going to put this evaluation bar, and you're going to say evaluated from x equals 3 to x equals 7. And to find our final answer, you're going to do a, what I call just top minus bottom. You're going to take the top value, plug it into your equation, and subtract off the bottom value plugged into the equation. So then starting at the front here, plugging 7 in, we'd end up with 7 to the 4th over 4 plus 5 times 7 to the 3rd. Plugging 7 in everywhere you see an x, 7 times 7 squared over 2 plus 3 times 7. So that's our top portion. And then subtracting off of that, we're going to plug 3 into that exact same equation. So we'll get 3 to the 4th over 4 plus 5 times 3 to the 3rd over 3 minus 7 times 3 squared over 2 and then plus 3 times 3. And now you just need to calculate out those individual values. So for this first piece right here, plugging all that into your calculator, you would get out this lovely number, 1, what is that, 12,257 divided by 12. And then we're going to subtract off of that. We would calculate all that out, pop that into a calculator, and you'd end up with 171 over 4. And then to get your final answer, you just subtract those two values. And so out of there, you would get the final answer of 2,936 over 3. And so that is the net area between the curve and the x-axis between 3 and 7. And that's your final answer. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.